Well, the sign in front of me says do not enter, but I guarantee you we're going to enter right beside me here. I'm here in Houston, Texas at the corner of 610 and 45, and thanks to a fellow Texas history buff, I found out about this location. Join me today on Walk Through Texas History, shall you? We're here at the Ike Wurzel Cemetery. It's on Enid Street, between Enid Street and White Oak Bayou, which is literally on the other side of the cemetery. I tell you, this would be a great place to have your final resting spot if it wasn't for the really loud noise of 45 right behind me. John William Ike Wurzel, Ike Wurzel, excuse me, is he actually the name for him because this was his land. He owned 15 acres of this land and he was a immigrant of Sweden who came here in 1871 and was a pastor of uh, one of the United Methodist Churches, I'm sorry, First Methodist Churches here in Houston, Texas. He lived to be 100 years old when he passed away in 1943. His wife passed away a number of years before. She's buried here along with most of the family members. Um, as I read, there were more graves, but in 1915 there was a major flood and the cemetery had a lot of the headstones were washed away. Um, I don't know if the bodies were actually washed away at the time, but I know that the uh, headstones were washed away at that point. So there's probably more people buried here than just 15. Uh, we'll take a quick look of the cemetery and the great view behind us of White Oak Bayou and uh, talk a little more about the history. This is the location of looks like three different uh, graves. This is the John family, Richard Otto John, his wife Pauline, and I believe it's their son um, right here as well. And they were buried in 1930 and I think right before that. Uh, the headstone is very hard to read on that one. We'll go to the left here and see the, the family that's buried here. Underneath this gorgeous tree is Stella Darling Eichwurzel and a little boy, uh, Clarence Eichwurzel. They, one died in 19, actually they both died in 1907. The mother died in 1907 as well. They may have had an epidemic at that time, yellow fever or some other epidemic uh, that, that killed all three. And to the left of that is the Charmin family. Now these two graves are kind of sinking in over time. Uh, this is Annie Sharman and her husband, Walter H. Sharman. They lived uh, quite a good life, 1954 and 1960, I believe. Born in 1884 and 1885. This was the daughter of uh, the namesake of the cemetery, uh, John William Ike Wurzel. And there's three more to the left before we get to the final family. This is Joanne Sharman. She was barely two years old uh, when she passed away, or two and a half years old, when she passed away in 1943. And I believe this is the daughter of uh, Annie, or actually may have been the granddaughter of Annie uh, Sharman. And then right above her, I believe it's her daughter, Betty Sharman, and son-in-law Harvey Sharman, or I'm sorry, son Harvey Sharman, daughter-in-law Betty Sharman, and I believe that's their child that's buried below uh, them here. Now this is the only one that's unique to the cemetery. There's no names on it. Uh, it may have faded off over time. It may have been just a marker that was put here. But that's the only one that's above ground like that. Uh, all the rest are of the concrete plots uh, that we see. And right beside us is the last two that are known uh, headstones that are left here. So. And here is John William Ike Wurzel, who, like I said, uh, if you see here, it was December 2nd, 1842. He died March 9th, 1943. So he was 100 years old. That is a very long life for a man uh, that lived through the Civil War, through World War I, uh, he actually was alive during the Mexican-American War um, and lived into World War II. Now, he didn't come to Texas until he was about 30 years old, so 
that plays a role in itself. His wife is right beside him. It's Sophie Eichorzel. She was born 1847, died 1907. As with her daughter and grand, I'm sorry, looks like her two daughters uh, right below her. They all died around the same time, 1907. So it must have been a disease of some sort that killed them. Now I'm not going to walk down this hill because A, it's got a lot of thorns in it. B, it's almost a straight shot down. But this tree, this camera doesn't do it justice. This tree right behind here at the edge of the bayou, white, white oak bayou right there, is enormous. Um, I am standing probably 30 feet above the base and it goes up and it's enormous. That is one gorgeous tree. I know that people would love to have that in their yard. I would imagine that tree uh, was placed here, or I say started here, uh, before the cemetery was even placed. It may not be that old, but it definitely looks it. It is just absolutely enormous. And just really gives a lot of shade to this cemetery itself. I had to show that, it's just really, really pretty. And that's just the bayou right behind us. It's a little trail down there if you wanted to go down there, but uh, I don't plan on making that trek. Well, that'll do it today, folks. You can see the highway right there. That's how close we are to 45. People drive by this every day. Wouldn't have a clue that, that this cemetery is right here. Uh, it's at the corner of a major, major intersection in the interstate at 610 and 45. But thank you to Mr. Jard for telling me about this cemetery. I would never have known it existed. Uh, there's so many in, in Texas that are like this. There are homes on both sides. And I imagine this is all his land at one point. But there's just le all that's left is these few uh, headstones and whatnot in the cemetery. It is mowed. Uh, it is pretty well kept for an old cemetery. And it's got some great trees that are here. I'm glad to know that some history is still around. I appreciate it, folks, and I really do appreciate all the support I've been getting. And you know, until next time, have a good one, and be sure to like and subscribe, and follow me on Facebook if you have not. Uh, the link is in the description below. I appreciate all the support, guys. Thank you.